Today we're going to talk about the Taylor series, and here we have the Taylor polynomial, and we can write that as a series. We have uh, sigma n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivative, which uh, you have the zero derivative really, which is just the function. You have the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, and on, so on. Uh, and you have x minus c to the n, which would be to the zero here, then to the first, then to the second, then to the third, and so on, over n factorial. So this Taylor polynomial can be turned into a Taylor series. If c equals zero, the, if c equals zero, the series is called the Maclaurin series. Example, find a Taylor series for f of x equals e to the 5x, centered at c equals 2, give the first four non-zero terms and the general term. So I found the first three derivatives, which will give us the first four non-zero terms. So here's the function. It'll be e to the 10th when you plug a 2 in. First derivative, remember the chain rule, you've got to multiply by 5, multiply by 5, multiply by 5. So there's the first four non-zero terms. If we write that into a Taylor polynomial of degree 3, that will give you the first four non-zero terms. Here it is. Remember, it's centered at 2. And then we can write that as a series. Sigma n equals 0 to infinity of 5 to the n. So you have 5 to the 0, 5 to the 1, 5 to the 2, 5 to the 3, uh, times x minus 2 to the n. And it, the power of x minus 2 is increasing by 1. And we could really write this uh, as over 0 factorial and this one over 1 factorial and wouldn't change a thing. So then we have n factorial in the denominator. If we look at uh, the power series, the function for power series, which is 1 over 1 minus x, we have a equals 1 and r equals x. There's the power series right there. We could write it as a series with sigma notation and just x to the n. Well, I've graphed a bunch of uh, the terms of the approximation to the actual function. The actual function is the skinny line, and it has uh, an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, at 1, because that would make the denominator 0. And the darker, thicker line is the approximation. Well, here's three terms, and it's good from negative 1 to 1. I should probably make that a different color so it sticks out a little more. It's good from negative 1 to 1. If we graph more of the terms for the approximation, it's still only good from negative 1 to 1. You can see it breaks down at, ne at 1. And it doesn't matter how many I graph, it gets bad before negative 1 and after 1. So the interval of convergence of the power series is negative 1 is less than x is less than 1, or in other words, from negative 1 to 1. Outside of this, uh, the approximation is bad. There are three special Maclaurin series you must know. These are, let me get rid of that, uh, e to the x, sine of x, and cosine of x. Here's e to the x, and we already have looked at this one uh, a little bit. All the derivatives are e to the x, so all of uh, the terms will be multiplied by 1. So we get 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial and so on. And here's the series for it, x to the n over n factorial and n equals 0 to infinity. I've graphed some terms for this one as well. Uh, here's the actual function e to the x. Here's the approximation. And it, look, it's good from, let's say, negative 2 maybe to 2. It kind of starts breaking down. If we plot, uh, if we graph more terms... Uh, we have to look, we have to zoom out a little bit, but now look, it's good from maybe negative 3 to 4. You know, it's getting better, wider, not like the power series where it's only from negative 1 to 1. And if I went to x to the 6th, then look, it, it's good from, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, maybe negative 6 to 6, it's getting good. And look how it's really good from 1 to 4. Uh, so the more terms we plot, the better it's getting, and, and the interval of convergence is just widening out. Well, the interval of convergence, if we graphed infinitely many terms, would be all reals. The approximation would fit the function perfectly. To derive a series for sine of x, here's the function, the first derivative, second derivative, third, 
once you get to the fourth derivative, you are back to where you started. And so this pattern of 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, it'll just repeat over and over again. You can see that uh, your function value is 0, then your first derivative is 1, second derivative will be gone, third derivative is negative 1, fourth derivative will be 0, and so the zeros will be will alternate, and then it goes 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. So we end up with the odd powers. Well, remember, that sign is an odd function. It's symmetric about the origin. So you would expect odd powers, and that's exactly what happens. Here's the fact that the signs alternate. We have x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial, and really these 2n plus 1 means we are looking at odd values. If you graph this one, the more you graph, the wider the interval of convergence becomes. And so the interval of convergence for sine is all reals. Whoops, don't need a second L, it's just all one L. Reals. To derive cosine, cosine does the same thing. Uh, on the fourth derivative, you're going to get back right back to where you started from, so it's going to repeat itself. And instead of giving, uh, getting the odds, we're going to get the evens with cosine. Cosine's evens. It's an even function because it's symmetric about the y-axis. You know, it starts at 1, like that, like that. It's symmetric about the y-axis, which makes it an even function. Here's the fact that uh, the signs are alternating. 2n means we have even powers. And if you look on the bottom, we have even factorials. Oh, and the interval of convergence. Interval of convergence is all reals again. The more terms you graph, the better the approximation gets and the wider the interval of convergence becomes. So if you graph all of them, it's gonna, the approximation will fit the polynomial perfectly. We can manipulate these three special series or any series we're given to find other series by using the following techniques. Substitute, multiply or divide the series by constant or a variable. That's going to be nice. Add or subtract two series, or we could differentiate or integrate a series. Let's look at the first example. Find a Maclaurin series for f of x equals sine of x squared. And here's the sine of x that we just talked about. Now all we have to do to get our new one is take the x squared and plug it in for all of these x's. And well, what happens when you plug x squared in for x? You get x squared. You plug x squared into x to the third, x squared into x to the third, you get x to the sixth because you multiply the powers. So we just have to multiply all of these powers by two. Well, uh, we need dot, dot, dot and AP really wants you to put those plus dot 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 indicating that you know that this series goes on forever so you could lose a point just by putting the dot not putting the dot dot dots well here's the fact that the signs alternate and if we take 4n plus 2 uh, you know we'll get all of these powers because they're increasing by 4 but if we plug a 0 in and we didn't have the plus 2 we'd get 0 but when we plug 0 in we want the first power to be 2. So there's where you get 4 and plus 2. And down here is the fact that they are not even, uh, but odd powers in the denominator, rather. Find the Maclaurin series for x cosine of x. Well, we've talked about the series for cosine. There it is again. And now we just have, we just have to multiply all of these terms by x because of that little x right there. And here's what you get. Yeah, right there. x minus x to the third plus x to the fifth. Well, those are now odd powers. So here's x to the 2n plus 1. That means we have odd powers. But uh, the denominators, the constants, they stay the same. And they are actually the even powers. Uh, not, not powers, but even value factorials. And there's the fact that the powers are the assigns switch. I like to say powers, apparently. Uh, the last example, find a Maclaurin series for f of x equals e to the 2x. Well, we've looked at e to the 2x. There it is. And now we just have to substitute 2x in for all of these x's. So here's what you get. Of course, you still have the 1. 
uh, x becomes 2x. If you plug 2x in for x squared, you know, you're going to get 4x squared. Uh, you plug 2x in for x to the third, get 8x to the third, 2x, you get 16x to the fourth, and so on. So there it is. Uh, this is uh, 2x to the n. If you plug a 0 in, you're going to get 1. 0 factorial is 1. You plug 1 in, you're going to get 2. Uh, 1 in for n, that is. You're going to get 2x and so on. So there's the series for this uh, Maclaurin polynomial. Let's see, we have use your answer in A. All right, so we're going to scroll up so that we can still see the answer. There's our answer for A. Uh, to find a Maclaurin series for a function h, we want to find a function h that given that h prime of x equals this. So this now, we want that to be h prime of x. So we want to find h given that fact. So we need to integrate this function. Well, if we integrate 1, that's x. Integrate 2x, that's x squared. Integrate uh, this one, we'll still have the constant. There's the constant part. And then integrating x squared is 1 third x to the third, but we'll still have that constant out in front. So there it is. Uh, but uh, when you integrate a function, you're going to get a constant. For example, if we integrate x squared dx, that's really 1 third x to the third plus c. So when we integrate all this, we're going to have a constant instead of in the end like we usually do. We're just going to put it out in front. All right, so what do we have? Well, the integral of 2x is x squared, but just for the sake of the pattern, I can do this. I can multiply the top and bottom by 2. That will be important in a minute here. And then we integrate the rest of the term. So this x squared, there's the x to the third, the 1 third, and the constant stays. Then we have x to the fourth times 1 fourth, and the constant stays. Well, there we're given the fact that, uh, let me talk about this first. If we clean this up a little bit, look, 3 times 2 factorial becomes 3 factorial because it really becomes 3 times 2 times 1. Well, that's 3 factorial. If you take 4 times 3 factorial, that becomes 4 factorial and so on. Uh, now we have h of 0 equals 3. So if we plug 0 in for all of these x's, all of these x's rather, uh, those would all go away, and we'd have 3 equals c. So c is 3. There it is. Now let me scroll up a little bit. Let me get rid of this. Try that again. There we go. Well, there it is. There's the Maclaurin polynomial, but we want to write that as a series. Well, as it turns out, this 3 doesn't fit in the series very well at all. So we just put 3 plus... Uh, sigma notation n equals 0 to infinity. And here's where putting 2 over 2 factorial fits the pattern nicely. So we have 2 to the n, x to the n plus 1, because remember we're starting here with the series, uh, with the sigma notation. We are just tacking on the plus 3. And down the bottom, we have n plus 1 factorial, because remember we're going to plug 0 in first. That would give us 1 factorial, then 2 factorial, and 3 factorial. So there's the answer that we've been looking for.